Um, I don't think toxic masculinity is a problem that women should be should have to feel involved in, and there should be pressure on them to solve it. But it's a problem that all of us have to solve. Um, none of us get to escape the consequences of social standards regarding gender. All of us have the ability to contribute positively. So, like, for example, there are women who make this a lot worse when they do stuff like expect men to pay for their dates, or they'll make fun of guys for being weak or short, you know? Those are standards by which women worsen these issues. I don't think it makes that much sense to go about it with, like, a, well, it's men's responsibility or women's responsibility to solve these issues, because at the end of the day, these are standards all of us believe in and all of us adhere to. So all of us should work to address them, right? For instance, like, you, you could never get rid of toxic masculinity if guys were just sitting and working on the problem, but all women were into, like, super misogynistic giga-chads who treated them like shit, you know? Because that would socially disincentivize any kind of real work of the behavior. It needs to be, like, a, you know, kind of like a communal effort to address these issues. So, there's a serious problem in the male community, especially when you look at some of the sort of patriarchal and toxic systems that we involve ourselves in with indoctrinating each other with sexist and hateful, uh, you know, like homophobic, antisocial behaviors. And yeah, I agree. Okay, you know, women might contribute that, to that a little, but is that really the the heart of of like what keeps toxic masculinity flowing through the, the veins of American men? Well, the heart of it is that it's a communal thing, um, which is why I would never say like, this is like any men's or whatever. Um, like we know this because we wouldn't do this in minority groups, right? For instance, there are specific issues with like black, black toxic masculinity or black homophobia. I don't think it would ever be fair to tell a gay person like, oh, you can't say anything about it because this is like the problem for black people to solve or whatever. I didn't say that women can't say anything about toxic masculinity. It's, it's actually this frame, it's, I have a problem with this framing and I think, I'm not saying it actually because I think I can convince you or anything like that. I think that would be pretty narcissistic. I actually thought maybe I could help you understand why people have a problem with your framing, well, if I, that makes sense. I think, I mean, I, I think the reason why they tend to is because they're cucks. That's my framework. You know, I, st I stand by that, I think. It's okay, not so, so much... you think the reason oh, that they have wait, problem hold on. with you your just, framing... Wait, wait, your microphone just shifted. Was that intentional or was that a computer issue? Your mic just changed. Is it working still? Oh, there you go. Okay, for a moment it sounded like you were using a mic that was way closer up. Um, yeah, okay, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you <laughs> off. I'm sorry about that. I just, I just got a new computer, it's all... It, it might have a little hiccups. But, I, I get um, that, yeah. So... Reason that people have the problem with your framing is because they derive sexual pleasure from watching people have sex with their significant other. Um, possibly, but no, I, I, I didn't, I didn't mean it in a literal way. Uh, when I, when I say like, I think they're being cucks about it. What I really mean is like, I think some people, um, I guess you might call it like the politics of sensitivity. I feel like some people are really, really, really concerned with the optics or like the implied politics of like, well, maybe men have problems too. A lot of the negative response that I got were, let's be clear, just people really offended by the idea of treating men's problems seriously. A lot of people were just really like, like kind of taken aback by the idea that men should have their problems be taken seriously. And I think that that I don't think that's I don't think that's true, honestly. No, I, I no, there I could, were a, I could be a wrong. lot of people being really be weird about that. You know, like really, really weird. So, uh, do you do you accept the idea that people can use coded language to communicate something more than than they they mean to, even if they're they're not aware that they're using coded language? Like, if I'm in a social group and somebody's talking about their boyfriend or something, and they they say, oh, you know, I just hate men. That has a very different meaning than if you switch the genders around and the man says, I hate women. No, I, I disagree. I think it'd be just the same. If a guy was in a support group and he'd been fucked over by a shitty girlfriend and he was like- No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying like, you're in your group of friends, uh, a girl's talking about a breakup or whatever. And another woman says like, man, men just suck, I hate men. And the social impact of that statement is different than if you were in the same group, but a man's complaining about his girlfriend, and another man says, women just suck, I hate women. 
No, I don't think those are different. Why don't you think they're different? Like well, we live in a society. I mean, in both cases, men and women, especially heterosexual men and women, are going to have varied and oftentimes negative experiences with each other. And it's going to, um, you know, people are going to express that frustration with behavior like, oh, women or oh, men or whatever. But I think that's normal, you know? I think it's okay for a woman to do it. I think it's okay for a guy to do it. I just don't think that it should, like, substantially inform your political biases, you know? At that point, like, you've got, you've got another issue, you know? Um, but there, there's some... Um... There's information being delivered in that statement. I mean, I don't want to go too far down this road, but there's information being delivered in that statement that's beyond what maybe is in the literal dictionary definition of the terms. A more extreme example is if like, uh, let's, let's pick a different example. Like if somebody said girl from LA, what kind of like, maybe what are some, some pictures that come up in your head? Do you mind if we play this game for just a little bit? Probably like, um, vapid Instagram model. Okay, so what what do you think if someone said like white girl from LA? Um, probably vapid Instagram model who likes Starbucks. Probably pretty much the same thing, I think. When I think girl from LA, LA has some like serious race issues when it comes to like redlining. So when I think like girl from LA, I think the girls near where I grew up in LA and a lot of them were like prissy white girls, you know? Yeah, okay, great. So um, what if somebody said like Mexican girl from LA? short with a fat ass. Not so much the Instagram type, because a lot of the Mexicans in Los Angeles are either first-generation immigrants or the descendants of first-generation immigrants and are too poor to be locked into the same social groups as the aforementioned white girls. Okay, I think that this is this is all I mean by coded language, is that um, we have pictures in our head. I think a lot of times when you say, like, girl from L.A. or white girl from L.A., people think, like, valley girl or, like, Instagram model, but... Uh, if you change the race, it conjures up a different picture in your head because there's societal context for that. I yeah, guess I in this race, it's, it's like, it's heritage. And that's all I mean about the statement of like coded language of someone saying like, oh, I hate men or versus like, oh, I hate women. Is that there is some extra meaning there, whether intentional or not, about what could be the, the meaning behind that statement. Like when a woman says, I hate men, you don't have to immediately uh, like worry that much about their their misogyny or whether it's like a social threat or there might be some bias there because it's just not something that's it's very common. No, I I, dis I disagree fully. Actually, the real difference here isn't whether or not there's that implicit message or that bigotry. The real question is is that bigotry socially meaningful? Now, I would absolutely concede that misogyny against women is way more of a social problem than misandry against men. I would fully agree with that. But in an interpersonal situation, you know, I don't, I think like sort of casually saying, oh, I hate women and oh, I hate men are essentially the same statement. There are tons of women who hate men. The only difference is that we don't have like an institutional bias towards uh, misandry the way we do misogyny. But I don't think that means that the underlying statements have changed with regards to their, um, they're they're like meaning you know then now we're just okay, talking okay, consequentially like where the harm lies fair enough but um maybe maybe that was just a bad example it's kind of it's a little bit hard because i'm trying to come up with them off the cuff but maybe the one with girl from la versus you know mexican girl from la you can understand how even if you say like white girl versus mexican girl you're not you would have to maybe say like Instagram Mexican girl or like rich Mexican girl to change the image in your head, even though literally the substitutions are just direct white for Mexican or yeah, no, I, I, or no I, I fully agree. And that's something that we all experience. Even the most unproblematic dude in the world is going to have like preconceptions loaded into their understanding of statements and what they sort of fit into any given set of, um, you know, demographic modifiers. I fully understand that. I don't disagree. Okay. I just so think, I think the state the... that like men, like that it's a social problem that men aren't getting their dicks wet. You know, I, I think that's like a wholly defensible statement. You can read like implicit misogyny into that. There are people who will say, you know, why aren't men getting laid? Maybe women should put out more or some shit like that, you know, but I didn't say that. And, and I was pretty clear in the, in the, you know, the full body of my tweets and certainly in my follow-ups that no, this just means it's a social issue that affects like alienation with men. It doesn't mean like women have to step in and fix it or anything. It's just sort of, um, 
uh, concurrent with broader social issues, and I think it should be taken seriously. So you think, I'm sorry, can you trace me through the thinking here for a little bit? a little bit because I was going to just talk about uh, you took it in just a slightly different direction. I guess I was talking about uh, why people might find this problematic and I was going to say there's this specific framing but um, uh, I'm, I didn't quite see how that connected to what you just said about your your point in making the thread and what what clear things you've tried to say. I think that's part of the, the problem with this for me is maybe I don't 100% understand what you're trying to say, or maybe people don't understand what you're trying to say. Well, would you agree that men having less and less sex on average is like a social issue? Because humans want to have sex, right? I mean, not all. There are asexual people and people who aren't ready and people with trauma and blah -dee blah But the majority of people uh, who, who are, you know, adults want to be having sex. It's something we enjoy. And if you're getting numbers of like, oh yeah, well like 30% of guys haven't had sex in the past year, that's a lot of guys. I mean, that's that's 30% of guys, even. Um, and, and I think well, that's this, representative. Well, this data I, I will say this data is not current. This, I mean, the, these trends have reversed, actually, and women have gone up and men have gone down, but... Yeah, which um, I fully agree is a social problem. Um, I only so saw that you think data later, you... but I, I don't think it. I don't think it matters with respect to the issue we're talking about, because I because I'm not like dying on an ideological hill. If men and women are equally alienated in a sexual respect, then I would say the exact same argument just in a gender neutral way. But if the data said only men or only women were having trouble getting laid, I would make the argument that that was a social problem. So, are you so you're no saying matter where that the this... data is? I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm not trying to. To cut you off, I'm just trying to understand the, um, so you think the problem, you, you mean to say that the problem specifically is that men aren't having sex and that's the sociological problem we should be taking more seriously? Well, the more recent data seems to indicate an equal level of chastity between men and women, at which point it's not a men issue, it's just a broader social issue that's gender neutral. But in, con in comfort with the original data that I saw, which is Warning. that men were having a harder time, I would say that's a men's issue and a social issue broadly, yeah. I think that let's, let's just go in a, uh, like into a world where it is a social issue and i like not going to argue on that point right this second, but... So if that is the specific part of the conver, or is that if that is like part of your specific uh, this the specific point you want to get across, I just think that I I would just say I think maybe what you're missing, I understand the argument that people are sometimes too sensitive, and it can ruin communication. I think it's a little bit uh, tenuous of a position to take because they're. I mean, sensitivity is a relative thing. And a lot of people are like, why can't I just call you the N-word? You're being too too sensitive. But I think that framing makes people nervous because it's the exact same framing you could find on like Tucker Carlson, for example. Well, this is the issue that I, this is one of the problems that I have with the left. That would mean that Tucker Carlson is correct and the left is failing to address it. So this is an issue that I've noticed. One of the reasons why incel and red pill communities have exploded in prominence is because a lot of mainstream feminists have done a really poor job of constructing narratives of gender that address some of the issues that men have. Because men are the hegemonic um, gender, because they're the more powerful gender, you know, by far, in, in so many respects. Their problems aren't taken as a matter of priority. And perhaps they shouldn't be. Women do face broader issues in many ways. But it's still important to recognize some sorts of things. Men are provably lonelier than women, not just in a sexual way, just in a variety of ways. And that is a real issue. Um, and a lot of guys get really lonely. Are and provably lone. That's, that's like a huge, I mean, I think that would be difficult to prove via dissertation, like let alone, I mean, that's a huge statement. Men are lonelier than women. I don't necessarily even think it's, it's wrong, but. Well, there you go. Men have a harder time making friends because toxic masculinity makes it really difficult for men to be open. It's easier to make friends with women. Everyone knows that. Um, women are taught to be more sociable. They're literally trained on being more, like, friendly. 
whereas men are often encouraged to be emotionally um, non-communicative, uh, being distant, being, you know, isolatory, being, um, you know, all that stuff. Like, those are considered manly characteristics, you know, that John Wayne, like, noble stranger bullshit. Yeah, um, but there's a, there's a lot of bullshit. I mean, I think you're sort of getting into, like, some weird territory that I think would make a lot of leftists nervous. Uh, just because you're getting into s some weird, like, gender essentialism a little bit. But men a do have those issues. That's just a feminist critique. Thank <laughs> you.